Hello and welcome to another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson, the legal and government correspondent. And today our guest is uh, the state attorney general for the state of Wisconsin, Josh Call. Attorney General Call, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jamie. Now, I want to point out that uh, you are probably the seventh or eighth uh, interview I've done for November elections of the various offices. And we interviewed your opponent on Saturday afternoon. Uh, he happened to be in town for a, a, a political fundraiser, I believe. So um, now um, I wanted to be able to give you that opportunity. You're coming through the state, uh, but just uh, at a date closer to the election, we want to get these interviews up. So we're doing this one by Zoom. I hope that's okay. Yeah, thanks for having me. We're going to be traveling. We have been traveling all over the state. And we will continue to be. And uh, we're looking forward to getting out there. But thanks for for having me uh, for this interview. You bet. Well, uh, let's start with, um, you know, you're the you're the incumbent, and uh, let's give the folks a little bit about a, your background be before we talk about your challengers' accusations. Okay. Absolutely. Um, well, I grew up in in Oshkosh and Fond du Lac in a family that was deeply involved in public service. Um, my mom was a prosecutor and elected official for a lot of her career. Uh, my stepdad, Bill, was a police officer in Nina. My mom's parents were both public school teachers in Fond du Lac. And I grew up seeing that example and how much, not only the work that they did impacted other people, but, but how much it meant to them to do that work. And uh, I'm really proud to have spent part of my career in public service. I was a federal prosecutor in Baltimore, one of the most violent cities in the country. I was in the narcotics section there and I prosecuted murderers, drug traffickers and gang members. Um, I also spent part of my career working on cases challenging laws that made it harder for people to vote, working to protect that fundamental democratic right, our, our right to vote. Uh, I was elected attorney general in, in 2018 and as attorney general, my top priority has been public safety. We investigate and prosecute some of the most serious offenses in the state at the Department of Justice. Um, that has included murder cases, sex offenders, and drug trafficking cases. We've worked to make our communities safer. And one of the things I'm really proud of as we talk about uh, the, the re-election campaign and as we've been talking about the upcoming election is that if you look at what we talked about in 2018, on issue after issue, we have delivered for Wisconsinites. I talked about ending the lawsuit challenging the Affordable Care Act and its protections for people with a pre-existing condition. We got Wisconsin out of that. We've worked to hold big pharmaceutical companies accountable for their role in the opioid epidemic. We sued Purdue Pharma and also joined multi-state investigations into opioid distributors and helped secure hundreds of millions of dollars that are gonna to go to communities across the state. Starting this year, actually, the dollars are coming in to help with the fight against the opioid epidemic. Um, we've worked to strengthen our sexual assault kit laws to help prevent a future backlog. And we launched a kit tracking system so that survivors can track their kits as they go through the process. We've worked to make our schools safer, including by launching a 24 seven uh, tip line that anybody can contact to get feedback on school safety concerns from trained analysts. Uh, and we've worked to protect clean air and clean water, including by uh, going after filing suit against companies that manufacture and market PFAS. I think it's critical that we get those toxic forever chemicals out of our water and that when we do it, it's the companies that polluted our water that are paying to clean it up, not Wisconsin taxpayers. Okay. Well, you mentioned how you've made it uh, public safety your number one priority. Um, that's um, coincidence because your your challenger, or your opponent has uh, indicated that he would do the same if he were elected. So um, do you know what he might be referring to or what it is that where you haven't made public safety a number one priority? Well, he and I have very different views for how we should go about working to make our communities safer. It's a, it's a clear choice in this race. Um, for example, um, as I mentioned, I was a federal prosecutor in one of the most violent cities in the country. Um, and at the Department of Justice, I've, I've overseen an agency that's nearly 50 times larger than the Fond du Lac County DA's office where my opponent has been. So uh, we've got different track records. Um, in terms of uh, our, our records in office, as I mentioned, we have taken on some of the toughest cases. Um, my opponent's office has struggled in some cases. There was a case involving a, a nine time felon that his office botched, they missed most of that felon's record and he got released on low bail. Uh, and then less than two weeks later, he got into a shootout with police and he killed a firefighter and wounded two other people. Um, only 20% uh, of 
domestic violence, uh, domestic abuse felonies charged by my opponent's office in his first six years in office were ultimately resulted in domestic abuse convictions. Um, I believe we need to invest in public safety. So back in November of last year, I put forward a safer Wisconsin plan that would invest $115 million in public safety. That includes investments in uh, officer recruitment, retention, wellness, community policing, mental health crisis response, uh, victim services, and violence prevention efforts, among other things. Um, I also think we need some common sense measures like universal background checks. Um, my opponent has not put forward uh, any plans for funding public safety, and uh, he has not spoken out in favor of any of those kinds of common sense measures like universal background checks. Um, so we've got some clear differences in this race. Um, the last thing I'll mention is uh, reforming our bail system. I believe we need to strengthen our system so that when people are arrested for serious crimes, they're kept behind bars and they don't get out just because they can afford to, to pay bail. Uh, the federal system where I worked as a prosecutor is a much more effective system at protecting public safety. There, if somebody is a danger to the community or they're a risk of flight, they don't get bail set at some particular amount. They are simply detained pending trials. So you don't have drug kingpins or wealthy people who commit crimes who are able to pay their way out. If somebody's a danger, they're simply detained. That's the kind of system I'd like to see in the state. Okay, well, um, along the lines of uh, funding, um, and you talked about investments in law enforcement, um, the insinuation when we interviewed your opponent was that um, you have defunded you know, law enforcement and criminal investigations and that there's been a backlog in processing of um, DNA and other you know, testing that is done at the law enforcement level. Can you, what is your response to that? Well, it's, it's just not true. Throughout my time in office, I've called for more funding for public safety in our criminal justice system in Wisconsin. L literally the day that I was inaugurated, I talked about the fact that public safety has been underfunded in Wisconsin for decades and we need to make investments. About a year ago, I put forward a $115 million public safety plan. Now, my opponent has made some false statements about vacancies at the Department of Justice, and you can look up the data, it's out there. Um, but what that my record shows is that uh, our rates, uh, the number of DCI investigators that we've had uh, over the course of my administration is very similar, but, but it's overall slightly higher than, than it was under my predecessor. Um, but fundamentally, I have proposed real solutions for investing in public safety, like my uh, Safe Wisconsin plan, but also calling for increased shared revenue. Those are dollars that go from the state to local communities, and they are critical in funding uh, all sorts of local uh, programs, including local law enforcement. And you know, among other folks, I'm proud to have the endorsement of 30 current and former mayors in Wisconsin, the officials who need to make sure that our local law enforcement have the resources that they need. My opponent has not been willing to step up and call on Republicans in the legislature to either increase uh, funding for public safety through plans like my Safer Wisconsin plan, or to call on them to increase shared revenue, which is another approach we could take to get resources to communities. I would like to do both. We are sitting on a massive state surplus right now. Resources to communities across Wisconsin to help fight crime, which again, I called for uh, almost a year ago now, uh, can help make our communities safer. And that's a critical step uh, for public safety we need to take. You mentioned that you made these calls for investment uh, you know, almost a year ago. And what it was the response by um, the legislature, which is controlled primarily by Republicans in both the House and the Senate? Yeah, unfortunately, the legislature so far has refused to even hold a hearing on those proposals. Um, these are common sense, sound investments we can make, as I mentioned. It includes things like officer recruitment, retention, and wellness, um, investing in community policing, investing in violence prevention and victim services programs, uh, investing in mental health crisis response. Um, I'm gonna continue calling for those kinds of investments. Uh, we were gonna have a budget process uh, next year, of course, the, the legislature will pass a new state budget. Uh, and so the budget that I've proposed for the Department of Justice is a crime fighting budget. It includes the kinds of investments I'm talking about but also additional funding for our state crime labs, for our division of criminal investigation. Um, we need to make these investments and we've got this huge surplus. So I would have liked to have seen the legislature act with more urgency because we need to get resources to our communities as soon as possible. But uh, in the next budget, we've seen uh, increasing calls from folks 
for uh, upping shared revenue. The governor recently called for that as well. Uh, and my hope is that we will see the legislature finally responding to these calls from, from local government because the, what we've seen in Wisconsin over decades now is a decrease in shared revenue. That's the resources that local governments are getting from the state, but an increase in costs. And that leaves our governments, our local governments in a very difficult position. We need to get them the resources they need to fund local law enforcement and other critical services. We need the state legislature to stop cutting those funds. All right. Um, well, let me uh, ask you, there was one example that uh, Mr. Tony gave with regard to Milwaukee County and pointed out that you know there's only a 56% solving um, uh, rate in, in the murders uh, cases in Milwaukee County and that given um, apparent uh, inadequacies in the local law enforcement that the attorney general's office should come in and prosecute the crimes for Milwaukee County. What's your position on that? Well, there are a couple things. First, um, the spike in shootings that we have seen not only in Milwaukee, but in cities around the country is unacceptable. It has been happening in the wake of the pandemic and we need to respond to this with urgency. That, again, that's why I put out my public safety nearly a year ago. Um, we need to do a few things. One is we need to get resources to our communities so that our local law enforcement offices around the state have the resources that they need to investigate cases fully. Um, building strong community law enforcement relationships is key to that. I saw that as a federal prosecutor in Baltimore, the critical role that that can play in getting information to law enforcement to help solve crimes. That's one of the reasons that I proposed investing in community policing. Um, but when asked, Mr. Tony hasn't pointed to any cases he thinks that the DA's office should have prosecuted that they didn't in Milwaukee. Uh, and the truth of the matter is that the Wisconsin Department of Justice works on cases in all 72 counties, and we need to be able to address cases throughout the state. So he suggested having prosecution authority in Milwaukee County. But my view is that if there is a crime that needs to be prosecuted by the Department of Justice, regardless of what county it's in, our DOJ should be able to bring prosecutions. I wouldn't limit it to Milwaukee, as he suggested. All right. And uh, finally, I wanted to give you a chance because on the federal level, you know, there's been the Dobbs decision that overturned Roe v. Wade and uh, took it from a federal issue back down to a state issue. So if your job is being the top law enforcement officer and the law in Wisconsin, as I understand, it, is from 1849, Will you be enforcing that law as attorney general if you're reelected? Yeah, so first, I think it's important to talk about what consequences the Supreme Court's decision has had. Um, we have begun to see really tragic circumstances happening to people. There was a 10-year-old rape victim in Ohio who had to travel to Indiana to obtain the health care that she needed. In Wisconsin, there was a woman who had a partial miscarriage who was left to bleed for 10 days before a doctor intervened. Um, and OBGYN told me about patients who come in with pregnancies that they had planned. And she said they used to be the most joyous appointments she had. And I, I, I remember those appointments with, with my own kids. She said, now sometimes people come in and, and they're terrified about what's going to happen if there's a complication. Um, and if you think about parents who have a couple kids at home, having to worry that if they get pregnant again, it might leave their kids without a parent. It's, it's, just, it's not right. And uh, four days after the Dobbs decision came down, uh, I filed a lawsuit seeking to block enforcement of that 1849 criminal abortion ban in Wisconsin. It, it has no exceptions for cases involving rape or incest, uh, or even to protect the health of the mother unless, and this is what the statute says, it's necessary to save the life of the mother. And so this has left doctors and medical professionals with really difficult choices to make in cases where there's a serious threat to the health of the mother or, or to the life of the mother. And they're not sure whether or not they're allowed under the law to intervene and, and potentially save the life of, of their patients. Now, uh, at the Department of Justice, uh, we work on the most serious cases in the state, drug trafficking cases, large scale drug trafficking, homicides, sexual assaults. My view is that taking resources away from those critical cases to instead go after people for abortions would be a significant misuse of Wisconsin DOJ resources. And I'm committed not to doing that. Um, my opponent has taken the opposite view. He has pledged repeatedly to enforce the 1849 abortion ban. He, he won't rule out enforcing it, even in cases involving rape or incest. And he's proposed empowering DAs in 
counties to cross county lines and enforce that abortion ban. There's, there's nothing else, no other type of case that he has proposed that for except for abortion prosecutions. And to me, that really reveals where his priorities lie. I think we need our attorney general to be focused on public safety and taking on the most difficult cases and the, the most serious crimes, not going after an extreme partisan agenda that's focused on things like uh, abortion cases or uh, bogus voter fraud cases, as he suggested. How do, I guess I didn't understand that uh, that was the case that he was promoting uh, prosecutors crossing county. How does that even work that prosecutors would cross county lines to in order to prosecute cases? The, the legislature would have to change the law for that to happen. It's not authorized right now, but that was one of his proposals for, for how that, that law could be enforced. And uh, uh, again, it's, it's not something he's proposed for any other type of case. Um, and what it does is it reveals how uh, radical and extreme his agenda is um, and how, how the extent to which he's prioritizing abortion cases rather than, than where I believe the priorities of the office should lie. Now, you mentioned um, you know, about violent crimes and so forth and being um, the top cop in the state and having your federal prosecution background. But um, Wisconsin also has a tradition of enforcing its environmental laws as well as uh, consumer protection. And where does your office, uh, where does your track record stand on that? We've really strengthened our enforcement of environmental and consumer protection laws during my, my time in office. Um, you know, I, um, I've been to, to Marinette, which has massive PFAS contamination in the water, those toxic forever chemicals. Um, I went to French Island, uh, which also has major PFAS contamination. In uh, Marinette, French I, Island being in La Crosse. That's right, that's right. And in, in Marinette, I heard from people about the impact that that's had, the concern that they have about having their kids drink water from the tap, the concern about the impact that might have happened to their health. Uh, I heard from a realtor who said, I, I can't sell houses if people don't feel confident that they can drink the water at the house. And those kinds of devastating impacts are, are unacceptable. And so we are working to hold PFAS manufacturers and marketers accountable. As I mentioned before, we need to get them to clean up those toxic chemicals. And we also need to make sure that they're paying for it. But we've also worked to hold polluters accountable um, and successfully held them accountable in a number of other types of cases. And same thing with consumer protection. When people get scammed, uh, our attorney general needs to step up and enforce the laws. So one, one case where we brought an enforcement action was against those companies that, that would call and, and offer extended auto warranties. Uh, we, we alleged that they were not in compliance with Wisconsin law and we uh, got them to, uh, among other things, uh, significantly step back from some of the activity that they were engaging in and required them to follow the laws in the state. Um, holding those scammers accountable is critical because that can have a, a huge impact on somebody's life. Uh, we also recently uh, convicted a person who uh, committed elder abuse and, and had uh, taken over $400,000 from, from somebody. Uh, so making sure that we are uh, protecting consumers and our, our environment is a critical part of the job. And it's another key differentiator in, in the race. This is something that I've taken very seriously. Uh, and my opponent really hasn't talked much at all about during the course of his campaign. All right. Well, um, we're getting close to the end of our time, but I want to give you a, a chance if there was a question I failed to ask or if, um, you, something where you want to emphasize for the voters the choice that they face in November. Well, we have a clear choice in the AG's race. As I mentioned before, uh, I'm a former federal prosecutor and the Wisconsin Department of Justice, which I have overseen, has investigated and prosecuted the most serious cases in this state. Um, the agency that I oversee is, is nearly 50 times bigger than, than the Fond du Lac County DA's office. So whether it's uh, our, our experience, our track record, or our values, my belief is that we need to continue to make uh, fighting crime the top priority and that we shouldn't be diverting resources to to things like enforcing an, an abortion ban from decades before women won, won the right to vote. Uh, so I'm, I'm proud of my record and we've gotten real results uh, over the course of my time in office from getting sexual assault kit reform passed to holding pharmaceutical companies accountable for their role in the opioid epidemic to making real progress in, in making our schools in Wisconsin safer. I believe that it's critical that we build on that progress and we keep the state moving forward uh, and that we don't let folks like my opponent who have an extreme radical agenda uh, take us backwards instead. 
All right. Now, how could people find out more about you or get more details about your positions and different issues? You can learn more about our campaign by going to our website, which is at joshcall.org. All right. Very good. With that, Attorney General Call, thank you for uh, spending some time with us today. Uh, you've got two weeks left to go in this race. And uh, uh, let us know if you're going to be coming through St. Croix County. Maybe we get a chance to chat again. Great. Well, thanks so much. You bet. And I want to thank our viewers for watching another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson. Keep watching.